So there's been a popular trend of animated maps going around showing a Google Earth projection and semi-transparent color layers on top showing either the war or empire that the video is focused on. They're very smooth and flashy, often showing troop movements, troop count, and maybe even also casualty counts as well. As someone who's been making YouTube historical maps for 16 years now, it's always cool to see the new ways the craft is evolving. However, the way these often called Google Earth mapping videos are being done has a lot of problems, and I wanted to make a video about it. I think that many aspects of this style of mapping range from deceptive to inaccurate, and with how popular they are right now, I'm worried about the medium choosing flash and speed over accuracy and scholarship. Firstly, I don't want this video to be a takedown piece so much as a call to action for these creators to do better. While some channels in particular are much bigger than others, and I'll use them as examples more, the criticisms apply across most of these channels. It's not about making mistakes in videos, everyone does that. I still make mistakes in my videos. The issues are about the practice in general. Secondly, I say these things partially from my own experience. My older videos were terrible, and many things I'll bring up in this video are problems I've had to make changes about over the years. I started my channel when I was a teenager, and it wouldn't surprise me that many of these channels are also younger people doing this for fun, and maybe not realizing the problems of the videos they make. So if any of those channels happen to see this video, I hope you take these criticisms constructively and are willing to make some changes. It's important that historical map videos do their best to be accurate and informative to help people learn history better. So let's get into the issues with Google Earth mapping. So the first issue is honestly the choice of using a Google Earth satellite map in general. Obviously, aesthetic is a personal taste thing, and some people are probably going to just like the look of a satellite map. It looks real, you're seeing the actual Earth. However, the issue comes in a few areas. Firstly, readability. I'll probably have to make an entirely separate video on map readability as a whole in the future, but in this case, the readability issue with Google Earth Maps is the use of layers. I understand that to see the Google Earth map underneath, you need the color layers to be somewhat transparent. However, this means you have a mixture of labels from the Google Earth layer and whatever labels you put on top. It makes it difficult for the viewer to distinguish them sometimes. But putting that bit aside, the bigger problem is that Google Earth uses modern borders, names, and cities. You might see a video on the Roman Empire and assume, well, surely people know that the modern borders, names, and cities are just there for reference, but if there's one thing I've learned over the years, never assume what people automatically know. Someone might think, wow, Rome conquered London, that's really cool. The problem is, they didn't. They founded London after conquering the area. Oh wow, they partially invaded Ukraine. Well, Ukraine didn't exist back then. Google Earth does have the ability to remove modern borders and city labels, so I think doing that would be a lot better. But if you insist on having modern borders and cities anyway, at least make a note somewhere on the video to point that out. I used to show modern borders in some of my older historical videos, but I've learned since that it's a bad idea. But while you can remove modern borders and cities from Google Earth, you can't change the modern terrain itself. For the videos covering the Russo-Ukrainian War, or any war in the past decade or two, this usually isn't much of a problem. However, it is a problem when covering any older historical subject. One might like showing a satellite map because you can see the terrain, but a lot of the terrain changes just like borders do. Deserts and forests will grow and shrink, urban sprawls will grow and shrink, coastlines are altered, Europe's forests have grown over the past century, and then if you compare Europe now to a few centuries ago and then again to Roman times, it's way different. The Sahara Desert has grown significantly, while the Amazon, Congo, and Indonesian rainforests have shrunk. The Aral Sea famously went from the fourth largest lake in the world to nearly disappearing within just 50 years. Meanwhile, humans building dams have created large reservoir lakes that didn't even exist 100 years ago. Using Google Earth Maps to depict something decades or even centuries ago is just inaccurate. If you like the aesthetic of showing terrain, that's great, but if it's older historical events, make your own terrain layer that's more accurate. Perhaps the biggest example on why this is a problem is with this video on the 80 Years War. Famously, the Dutch coastline has changed a lot, and while it's great that this video shows the correct coastline on top, it still shows the land from the Google Earth map. Again, don't assume the audience automatically knows why it looks like this. For all they know, this bit could have just been a tiny neutral country. Even now, you have events like the Kokovka Reservoir Lake in Ukraine drying up due to sabotage. Do the Google Earth maps show this change? No. 
I understand so much of Google Earth mapping revolves around the Google Earth aesthetic, but it alters the reality of the ground and misconstrues things. It's one thing to say a map cannot show every aspect of a war or empire, that's just the limitation of the medium as a whole. This sort of thing though is something that could be changed with a different map. Okay, so a lot of these videos will show either the number of casualties during a war or the size of the army on either a specific front line or as a whole. The numbers are changing fast and smoothly, and this is done by using keyframes. Basically the idea is you put the numbers at different points and the program will auto-fill in the gaps by having the number count up or down at whatever speed it takes for it to get from number X to number Y. It certainly looks cool and flashy, but again there are many issues with using this. Firstly, armies don't increase and decrease this smoothly. I understand that it's a natural limitation of the software, but there are days in a war where tens of thousands die, and days where barely anyone dies. But the numbers will still count up and down smoothly like soldiers are dying at the same rate each day. Or should I say dying and getting injured, because often the videos use casualties, which includes injuries and deaths. But what about people that died off the battlefield? What about when people get transferred from one front line to another? Obviously I don't expect perfect casualty figures, but I feel like there is a line between estimating casualties and outright false conceptions on how the numbers get to where they are. I remember for my American Civil War Everyday video, I tried to show deaths in battle and I wanted it accurate to the day. I had a very good book showing those numbers for thousands of battles, yet when adding up those numbers, it's still missing many from official total estimates. Some of the battles had different numbers depending on where you got the source from. Then also for battles that went across multiple days, I basically had to like divide the numbers evenly across those days. And while in the end it was more accurate than general keyframing, it still didn't sit right with me and it's why I gave up showing real time kill count or casualty numbers long ago. A lot of these videos will occasionally show boxes that represent a certain number of soldiers, usually around a thousand since that's a common battalion size, but not every army uses the same army sizes, and not every war just lines them up across the entire front line evenly. I don't want to have a feature just to make it look cool if it's not even right. Then while at least for some wars like the American Civil War or the World Wars we have a decent idea of casualties, there are some wars where the ranges are just so large that there's no way you can accurately show them at a day by day level anyway. This one video shows the casualties and army size of Rome altogether. You know, just all of Rome. I'm sorry, there's just no way to get reliably accurate numbers for every war and time period in Roman history. It's just not possible. Also, there's a point where the total casualties for Rome started going down? How does that even happen? What about the people that die outside of war? Is that factored in? What's the methodology here? Where are the sources for this? Well, that leads to the next big problem with these videos. So this is a problem that's common with educational YouTube in general, and Google Earth mappers are no different. If you look at the most notable Google Earth mapping channels, and look at their 20 most recently made videos, they barely include citations, if at all. Strangely, some of them will show citations for ones depicting modern wars, but then none for historical ones. I know a lot of people on the internet have a problem with just believing what the video tells them, but that makes it all the more important to cite your work properly so people can either learn more about the subject or figure out how you make your videos. Many of these channels have been accused by other historical mapping channels for tracing other people's work. Now admittedly, I find accusations of tracing a bit annoying. Firstly, there are two aspects of an animated historical map that can be traced. The coasts and borders, or the depiction of a map's front lines. Coastlines and international borders aren't intellectual property, and virtually everyone traces those when making their base maps. I do that when making base maps for my videos by hand because I enjoy the feeling of drawing by hand. I've been quite open about that. Many others will use programs like QGIS to essentially have a computer trace a map for them using a set of coordinates or another reference map. Tracing front lines of a war, however, is a gray area because unlike modern international borders and general coastlines, there are usually no objectively precise front lines, and many people will draw their interpretation of an accurate front line based on their research. So in this case, it's no longer common or general knowledge, but rather a lighter form of using someone else's work to supplement or replace your own. 
However, I found that most of the time when a channel is accused of this form of tracing, it's certainly not an exact match. And while you could argue the general shape or advances look very similar, if both videos used accurate or similar sourcing with good information, it's going to look similar. Recently, Maps in a Nutshell was accused of tracing for his Aztec Conquest video from another mapping channel, and frankly not only does it not look the same as the video in question, but this is a bad example anyway because the route of Cortez conquering the Aztecs is extremely well documented and consistent across any reference one might use. So calling this tracing when it's probably not doesn't really help anything. But I can definitely see obvious general referencing of other people's work. Referencing in of itself is not a problem because the entire fields of history and geography reference other people's work and build off of them as a foundational concept. The issue is tracing or referencing other people's work without properly citing them. It tells people who you reference not just so they can have credit for their work, but also so if you map something that seems weird, people can look at your sources to know how you arrived at that conclusion. I know some channels get angry when another channel gets a more successful video on the same topic. Believe me, I've had people openly use my work as the majority of their references and then get a video more successful than anything I've ever made. It's understandably frustrating, and unfortunately you can never fully escape that issue. Especially when there are hundreds of mapping channels now of various sizes, there's going to be subject overlap. It's just going to happen. But if you want to at least get people off your back and stop accusing you of tracing, then provide your sources across every video you make. Just to be clear, I also used to be horrible at this. I started my channel as a 13 year old just making videos out of boredom, and my citations ranged from none at all to barely a few broader ones. At the time, I didn't see my videos in the same area as an academic journal article or a published book. I even used to have the silly mentality where this random video didn't mean so much, so whatever, but this World War II video? This is serious, better include citations. It was inconsistent for many years. But as my audience grew and I learned how much they used my videos to help with their own research or schoolwork, I then realized it was important for me to get better at that. It not only was more responsible, but it helped me make my videos better than I previously was doing. Obviously any form of citation is better than none at all, but for the past several years I've decided to use full Chicago style citations whenever I can and put them in the description. If you don't know how to do that, I recommend using Citation Machine, which has templates for every major kind of citation. Microsoft Word also has a similar feature if you'd prefer that. I've been spending the past several years remaking older videos to redo them with my current standards. While I've deleted some older videos, you don't even need to do that. I've been going through my older videos and marking them with either an outdated label or an accurate label so people at least know that what they're watching has problems, but can still view it if they really want to. Take it from me, the sooner you do this, the better not only your videos get, but the better your reputation gets. It's cool that you guys have brought a lot of people to history and geography, but you need to make sure it's done more accurately and with more academic honesty. Especially in a world where unregulated AI slop gets more and more common. It makes it that much more important that there are ways to distinguish accuracy and honesty from deception and falsehoods. So again, I hope if any of you Google Earth mappers are watching this video that you'll make the effort to better your practices and videos going forward. I promise it'll be worth it, and it's the right thing to do. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time.